What's up guys, it's Ryan again from Lake Hicker Scuba Marina. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the bare essentials uh, that you need to do an effective search and recovery dive. Now, this is something that we do day in, day out around here. I'm gonna say on average, we probably do three to four search and recovery dives a week throughout the summertime and about one to two throughout the week during the wintertime. Now, there's certain tools of the trades that we use that you should be using as well to make your search and recovery dives more effective and it will also help them become more successful. So let's take a quick look here in the showroom and I'll show you some of the bare essentials that you may need anytime that you're doing search and recovery diving. All right guys, so we're here in the showroom and I've actually already got some equipment pulled out. Um, one thing that I'm not gonna be focusing on, of course, are fins, masks, regulators, BCDs, because in my opinion, you can use any BCD, any regulator to do an effective search and recovery. So we're not gonna be focusing on that, but what we are gonna be focusing on is accessories and what accessory items really come in handy anytime that you're gonna be doing search and recovery. We're also gonna be focusing on lights and what type of lights and anything like that. So there's several things that I use. Of course, I, I always take a torch or a light with me. I definitely have some type of reel system with me. I have several different accessory clips. I have SMBs and lift bags. So I've already got some pulled out to make the video a little bit shorter for you. So let's take a quick look Look here I have chosen to go with the comfort zone scuba land and sea light this is probably one of my favorite lights out there it's coming in around that thousand loom uh, range and to me that's kind of on the higher end of the spectrum yes they make plenty of lights so it's a lot more powerful than this but we're not going to be going in caves we're not going really deep for stuff like this but the thousand looms in my opinion would be the higher end of the spectrum two to four hundred looms is going to be the lower end of the spectrum five to eight is going to be the mid and of course eight to a thousand is going to be that higher end so i don't want much more light than that and typically that thousand is going to be a little on the high end however anytime that you're searching say in turbid water you're going to have a lot of refract or refraction and a lot of reflection happening in turbid water so the thousand may be a little bit too much for you but i really like this light simply because it does come with a little glove mount here i can do it use it on my left or right hand so it really comes in handy so I'm going to choose that one right there. The next item, of course, is a compass. And it doesn't really matter if you use a wrist-mounted compass or a console. I personally like the wrist-mounted. Uh, back when I first learned to dive, the wrist mount was all we had. That's all we had to use. And then I kind of got lazy and started using the console mount. However, in search and recovery, I don't want to have to constantly pull my console up to look at it. So I really like a wrist mount. Whether you use a strap system like this or you use a bungee system, me personally, I do like the bungee better than the strap, but this is going to be fine. But you do want a good quality compass that's easy to set. Uh, you don't want the bezel too loose. You want it to be able to lock into place. So we're going to go with this guy here. I've got two different reel systems. I, I have a Rick style reel, if you will, and I also have a finger spool reel. And I want to talk about why you would actually need both. Now, typically you're going to be doing search and recovery diving with a buddy. And if you're doing a sweep or a circle search, these reels here come in really handy to actually lock into a certain range, if you will. And it makes it easy for two people people to operate but let's say that you do a lot of search and recovery like I do where you're actually doing solo search and recovery this makes it very easy for me to let out a cer certain inc uh, increment or a certain amount of line to do say a circle search so I can let out exactly five feet and exactly ten foot and it actually locks into place and it makes it easier if I'm doing it in cold water I've got a big handle here that it helps me wind up the reel I don't have to sit there and worry about trying to spool it back on so these reels really come in handy here uh, it does come with an attached bolt snap, which makes it easy. I can just simply just clip off to me very easily. <clears throat> and it also helps clipping off to the line itself to keep it from causing an entanglement hazard. Now, I also want a finger spool in general. Now, me personally, I like a 50-foot finger spool. However, I'm not going to get a 50-foot finger spool. I'm actually going to get a 75-foot. Now, the reason I go with 50, that's basically off my geographical location. Simply put, I need at least 50 foot for the basic searches that I do here for solo diving uh, because I use this guy not necessarily for the search itself, but for a reference line. I can set this up as a reference line. I can drop it down to 50 foot. And then of course, I've got a reference point to search when I'm underwater. Now, the reason I say a 50, I like the 50, but I go with the 
75 because I need to be able to cut off some of this line. If you look real close, you'll notice that the ports and the windows here are completely closed off and I have no access to it. Well, if I go with a 50 foot spool and cut some line off, now I no longer have a 50 foot spool. However, if I go with a 75, I can take off up to 25 feet of line, which will open up these ports and windows. And then I still have a 50 foot spool to use. It does come with a double ender, which is really nice because I can use it to clip off and to lash off the line as well. Now I do also carry an extra bolt snap and double ender with me as well. This is a working double ender. I can use it for practically anything and of course my bolt snap if I need to of course I can tie it off to my light Maybe I'm in a situation where I don't necessarily need the light for the entire length of the search I can just simply tie it off with the extra line that I cut off the spool and of course clip it off to me So I always carry an extra bolt snap an extra double ender with me Moving on over, of course, I've got an SMB here. Now, I prefer the larger style SMBs for a couple of reasons. The six, seven footers are very visible compared to say a four or five footer. Um, plus, it's gonna give me a little bit extra volume of air. Uh, if you're a side mount diver or a solo diver or even a tech diver, you'll understand that we can use these SMBs as a backup bladder system in the worst case scenario. Uh, one of the things that we teach in side mount diver is how to use this as a backup bladder system. And that six to seven footer is gonna give me that extra little bit of volume of air for lift as well so that really comes in handy plus I can mark a dive site I can mark objects as well and then of course a lift bag now typically lift bags of this size usually come in a 50 to 100 foot lift capacity I personally prefer the 100 uh, pound uh, lift capacity simply because let's say I've got an object that uh, it may not weigh 50 pounds. I may not need exactly 50 pounds of lift. Maybe I only need about 40 pounds of lift. However, since the object is actually sunk down into the mud and silt, that 50 pounds may not be enough to actually break it free from the silt. Um, so I'm gonna go with the 100, give me an extra little bit of lift there just in case. Um, and you can never have too much lift. You can always have not enough, but having too much lift is actually not a bad thing. So I'm gonna go with the 100 pound lift bag versus the 50 pound lift bag I really think it's a little bit more versatile anything over that that I'll be lifting I would definitely encourage to always have a buddy with you so but for solo search and recovery which is what I primarily do this is going to be my choice the 100 pound lift as well but guys these are kind of the bare essentials of what I feel like you need if you're going to be doing search and recovery diving on a regular basis they definitely come in handy they don't take up much room this of course mounts to my left hand this is on my uh, right wrist uh, this is usually, both of these are usually clipped off to my side D-ring on my right hip. Uh, this is either attached to my flashlight or in a spare parts kit. This is always clipped off to my right shoulder D-ring. This is clipped off as well to my right hip along with the reel systems. And this usually attaches to say the finger spool because that's what I use to mark objects and or create downlines or reference lines. And of course this is clipped off to my BCD itself. But guys, these are the bare essentials. However, there are two more items that you really need before you go out and do search and recovery. So let's take a quick look at what they are and then I'll kind of give you some final thoughts. All right, guys, so the last two items that we're going to talk about that's really going to make your search and recovery dives more effective and more successful, of course, is proper training and patience and the two between those two i'm gonna say proper training is the most important please go out and get proper training in scuba diving if you're not already certified you might want to take other courses such as night diver deep diver wreck diver because there's a lot of skill sets that you're going to learn throughout those courses that will really make your dives more effective more successful and more importantly a lot safer and then of course the last thing you want of course is patience if you don't have patience you're not going to be very good at doing search and recovery dives in a lot of our videos you guys you got to understand these are edited down for time purposes some of these dives i do in two to three minutes some dives takes me an hour to two hours even in only about 10 foot of water to find certain objects based off what the visibility is so proper training and patience are the last two things that you need to make your dives more successful uh, more effective and of course a lot more safe Guys, I want to give a shout out to Roy Atkins. If you're out in the Ozark, Alabama area, he does a lot of search and recovery diving like I do here in the Hickory and Taylorsville area of North Carolina. Give him, uh, give him a call or a buzz or an email. I'll put all his information right here for you. Uh, give him a buzz if you need him or need his services. I think he also does pool repair. So definitely check out Roy. Guys, if you got any questions on search and recovery diving, any of the items, I'll try to put all these down in the description below and our review videos on them. So you can definitely check them out. But if you 
got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below. Guys, if you like this video, if you found it helpful, do me two favors. Definitely smash the like button for me and definitely share it. Guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.